Hey, sportsman John Bergsma. For this week's Hot Bites Fishing Report, we got four great locations again. We start in the Upper Peninsula. As we all know, it's been a little bit warm this winter, so we're going to start in Munising. They got some really good fishing going on in Munising, Michigan. We're going to drop over to Curtis, Michigan and visit the Manistiques Lake Recreation Area for the great fishing going on over there. We come back down over the bridge, the town of Cadillac, one of our go-to spots for ice fishing every year. Chris at the Pilgrim's Village says they've got good consistent fishing. Then we're going to slide all the way south to the southwest part of Michigan, the Kalamazoo and the St. Joe Rivers for steelhead fishing with Captain Mark Rapson. And he's probably got Tony from Frostbrite somewhere close by as well. Stay tuned, we got four reports. You're going to like these four. So, Munising, Michigan, you know, this is a spot we're going to start bringing to you a lot more this coming year because we got some awesome fishing up there in that Munising Harbor area. But right now we've got a mix, believe it or not, of some open water as well as ice fishing going on in Munising area. So, what are they targeting and how are they doing it? They're targeting coho, splake, and whitefish. And they're jigging, whether, you, whether you're able to get out in a boat through a cut path from one of the netters, or whether you're trying to stay on the ice, Munising's got good jigging with Swedish pimples going on right now in the bottom 30 feet of water. So you're targeting these three species, coho, splake, and whitefish, in the 50 to 80 foot zone with either uh, Swedish pimples tipped with spawn or jigs and uh, a minnow head. Not, nothing you know, super fancy, and you're working it slow and making sure that you're holding it. And when I say slow, I mean you're not ripping it too hard. You're giving a good firm lift, probably tight lining, somewhat tight lining down, and then always paying attention. Now I like to fish these with a setup of mainline braid to about a two foot fluorocarbon leader because you're dealing with that super clean Lake Superior water. And be very aware on the drop of whether you get a catch. What I mean by that is as the pimples drop and are the fish coming in and catching that and it's not ever getting to the bottom. That's an immediate fast reel and hook set when that happens. That's typically how these fish hit. Now, also on the dead hold about three inches off the bottom, they can come in and you'll just feel that little nod like a perch bite where they come in and just mouth it. Whitefish especially will bite that way. You'll get the, the trout species, they'll slam it sometimes and just go the other way and your drag will be ripping. But the whitefish are just going to mouth it like a perch. So those are the two ways that people are uh, sensing the bite and that's the presentation. Now, if you're looking for a place to stay up in the Munising area, Brenda up at Alger Falls does a great job. She's open year round, of course, for snowmobilers and then the massive summer, summer uh, flow of traffic. And right across the street from Alger Falls, if Brenda's booked up with sledders, you can also stay up at the Hillcrest. Now the Hillcrest, basically they're both right there on the highway going right, coming into Munising. So you got two great options for good accommodations. They'll keep you warm, they'll keep you happy, and of course, a little bit up the road, the, my, our friends uh, Corey up at the Pictured Rocks Inn will be open up for the season here in the spring, so we'll chat more about Corey when she's back open for the year. But Munising, Michigan, right now, for some really fun action on trout and whitefish and splake. So get up there and try this unique bite out. Now, if you're looking for a guided trip, you know, my friend up at Marquette Ice Fishing Adventures does venture over here to the Munising area. Mike Coziera has got a great little winter and summer uh, fishing, kind of like an excursion adventure guided service. Now, he does a lot of white fishing up in this northern section of the central Upper Peninsula. So contact Mike at Marquette Ice Fishing Adventures. He knows a lot about this Munising bite. He can get you out where the ice is safe because let's be honest, whenever you're dealing with Great Lakes ice, you're dealing with a very, very fickle circumstance. Currents and all kinds of things can play havoc with the ice. 
Hey, Jeff Miller here today, just kind of going over one of our electronics mounts, showing you how this is used on this Polar Craft, and, and we're actually using it in their T-bolt extruded slot. Now, a lot of the boat manufacturers have gone to having their own track systems built right into the gunnel walls of their boat, really strong and heavy duty, and we make brackets, all big heavy aluminum brackets with stainless steel machine T-nuts that slide into the track, turn and rotate, lock this bracket down nice and solid in place. So we do it with tracks, other options, We'll show you that in the future here. Just wanted to show you today, this is one bracket with two T-nuts that go in here, so there's no teetering in here, and this locks in. This is our double pivot, 13 inch long electronics mount that we didn't have room on this dash on this particular boat to mount our nice big you know, 10 inch graft that we're putting on here. And everybody nowadays, we're all putting nines, tens, 12 inch grafts. Now there's out the 16 inch. So we needed something nice and stout and solid with lots of room and, and adjustability on it. So this bracket comes into play because this bracket can be pushed out to the side, real tight and tolerance, lock into place, and we can adjust this with some height, some movability, some pivoting locations back and forth on here at the bottom and the top with the double pivot application on here. Just want to show you another cool way of using an electronics mount application on your boat, possibly in the T-bolt bracket system if need be, or it can go on a rail clamp or right into our track. But this is in this setup and it's working out really good for this client. So thank you very much. Any more information on all of our electronics mount applications that we have, go see us at TraxTech.com. Hey, for our next stop of the day, we're up over in Curtis, Michigan in the Manistique Lakes Recreation Area. Now we chatted with the guys up at Mix Sport Shop and at the Fish and Hunt. Both of those local bait shops tell us that there's really good consistent fishing action going on on both South Lake Manistique and Big Lake Manistique. So what's biting? On South Lake, it's more of like a total splash mix bag. We're dealing with sunfish, bluegill, perch, the occasional walleye, lots of northern pike, and even a crappie or two being starting to mix into this late winter bite. Now you've got good ice over there in the Curtis area and you've had good ice there for a couple of months now. Now it fluctuates a little with snow depth, not the ice, but the but the mode of travel, you know, how it can be easier and harder. Right now, travel seems to be all right, and guys are being able to move around and get to the spots. So, how are you targeting those fish on South Lake? You're targeting with small dew jiggers, a minnow head, a small jigging spoon with a minnow head, a dead stick with a live but smaller size minnow, or a tip up with a medium to larger minnow if you're targeting pike. If you want walleye, drop down to that smaller size minnow on your tip up or your dead stick to get big perch and walleye to bite. Now if you slide over a big lake manistique, there's also a real solid bite going on around the Burnt Island area to the west towards Anderson Bar. Now there's a big seven, eight, nine foot flat area where most of the weeds grow in the summertime. That's the area that seems to be holding most of the fish. There's also a random bite over on the Helmer Bar up in Helmer Bay where you'll get a morning and evening bite of walleyes coming up out of that 15, 16 foot of water to feed up on the top of that eight foot flat, which is the top of Helmer Bar. So you've got those two bites going on. So what species are you getting there? On Big Lake, you're gonna get primarily perch, a few random sunfish, and walleye and pike. Now the pike bite's been very good. Size hasn't been fantastic, but they are catching a lot of keeper, 24 to 26 inch fish, a lot of decent sized walleyes in that 15 to 18 inch class fish. But again, this is a morning and evening bite going on for walleyes. Pike is more of an all day thing. And if you're targeting the perch over by Burnt Island to the west, then that's gonna be, of course, just move around, set up in an area, and, and have you know six, eight holes drilled and just move around and try to pick them off as they swim through that open flat area. Same type of presentation as on South Lake. We're talking about tip-ups and dead sticks with moderate to smaller minnows for perch and walleye. You upsize the minnow, you're gonna be targeting the pike. Now, bluegills, same thing. Really small teardrops and waxies or spikes or a dew jigger and a perch head 
also. But if you're going to do a do-jigger or something like that, a Russian spoon, make sure you go to the smaller size. Uh, it, Big Manistique isn't a lake where I tr tend to, you know, go really big on stuff. I spend a lot of time fishing Big Manistique Lake. It's one of my favorite lakes. And this lake is one where bigger isn't necessarily better. Sometimes the smaller presentation seems to work really good there. So don't oversize things there. Just play the moderate game. But if you're looking for places to stay, so we got two options. On South Lake Manistique, we've got the... Um, Oh, what is it? Sunset Pines Resort. Now that's right on the shores of South Lake. You've also, of course, got other accommodations right there in town, little hotel in town, things like that. But if you're looking for that resort setting, Sunset Pines is the place to stay. Now, if you're going to the big lake, you've got two side by side. You've got the Pine Bluff Cedar Ridge Resort Complex, which is Absolutely one of the finest resorts anywhere in northern Michigan. It is amazing. It's got indoor pools. It's got a bar and a restaurant. It's got full homes that'll sleep up to six, eight guys, no problem at all. You've got direct access to the lake via your sled, your ATV, your snowmobile, whatever. And it's also right close to the Helmer Bar and to Burnt Island, not a far transit at all. So it's a really good, convenient spot. Right next door, my friend Mike Soder, who owns the fish and hunt shop in town, owns the small resort right next door. He's got good accommodations. Contact him at Fish and Hunt right there in downtown. That's where you can stop and get your minnows, your bait, your tackles, some lake maps, good information. And also, he can rent you a room as well. Now, Mike's typically you know, pretty, pretty filled up with snowmobilers on the weekend, but you can give either him or Pine Bluff Cedar Ridge Resort a call. You should be able to find a room. But whatever you do, make the Manistique Lakes Recreation Area a destination for here in the late season, because that walleye bite, I'm here to tell you, I've fished it many times, that walleye bite from now until the oh, late March is going to really get hot. They'll come in, they'll start to come in and stage on the shallow breaks on the east shore and on the north shore, as well as Helmer Bar, and that bite will get really good. So stay tuned for further reports. Hey, are you in the market for a small outdoor shed, carport, or small storage building? Visit my friends up at Midwest Steel Carports. They'll travel anywhere in the Lower Peninsula to install your shed or carport for you. Visit them online at MidwestSteelCarports.com. So the Cadillac region, well, this is a region we love to talk about here at Fisherman's Digest because, to be honest, this is one of the most consistent ice fishing destinations anywhere in the state of Michigan. It seems like Joy and her staff up there at the Cadillac Tourism Convention Bureau have a great plan to always keep people happy when they're off the water in town with special events. But right now, there's a really good bite going on up at Lake Cadillac as well as on Mitchell. Now Mitchell is the one we typically talk about. We'll start there. So what's happening on Mitchell? The fronts of the coves right now, right where it starts to go from that four or five and drop off to that eight, nine, 10, that break right there, that main break in fronts of the coves has been producing really good mix bags of crappie and sunfish. Now the sunfish here this year have been a very solid size. A lot of seven, eight, nine, even 10 inchers I've seen coming up to Pilgrim's Village on the photo guide. And Chris and Steve tell me that they've got a shop filled with stuff ready to serve you right there on the shores of Lake Mitchell. Now, if you're not looking for panfish, you're looking for just a little something different, you can go in front of Mitchell State Park right there behind the resort and the perch and walleye, a mixed bag of perch and walleye is happening right now. Now, perch and walleye, same traditional ways. However you like to target them, I know they use a lot of mix of dead sticks and tip-ups, a spread of tip-ups, and also do some light jigging with some small downsized jigs. Seems to work really well there for perch, sunfish, crappie. But if you're going to target crappie specifically, I'd go with a whole live minnow, live hooked, right behind the dorsal fin and let it struggle. The crappie really are into that. Also, don't forget that crappie love to suspend, which means you're not going to fish the bottom like you would when you're fishing for, oh, a bluegill, a perch, or a walleye. You're going to be up in that mid-depth. You're going to want to have your electronics. You're going to want to make sure it's on, and you're watching for those blips in the mid-depth. Them are typically crappie, and I've seen crappie as far as just up as just a couple feet under the ice. That is not at all unusual in a lot of lakes 
lakes to catch crappie, oh, just a few feet under the ice, they're suspending, and they're looking for minnows that are trapped by the bottom of the ice. So that's one of the cool presentations you can do. Now, if you move over to Lake Cadillac, then you're gonna be looking in front of Kenwood Park, Kenwood Park right now for crappie and perch. There's been a good mixed bag bite there in front of Kenwood for crappie and perch. Now you're gonna be fishing in that 10 to 15 foot area still. The fish haven't slid in yet. We're still midwinter, so don't, I wouldn't target too shallow necessarily right now. Be willing to move around until you find them as always with crappie and perch, they're movers. So you have two options. You can either sit and wait for them to come to you or you can drill a spread of holes, go with a group of guys and then everybody hone in on the guy or two that's catching the most fish and try to, so, so to speak, circle the wagons and get around where the best bite is going on. Same traditional ways you're catching crappie and perch, live minnows suspended for crappie, jigging on the bottom with small jigging spoons, Russian spoons, dew jiggers, things like that. Of course, dead sticks and tip-ups always work as well. Just don't oversize your stuff, guys. When you're fishing for perch and for crappie, you're not gonna be wanting to go much more than a couple inches on a minnow right now because these fish are gonna be a little apprehensive to take a big bait. You're gonna be targeting more walleye and pike with those bigger baits. No, if you're looking for places to stay, you're coming in for just a quick night stay up at the Days Inn, right? Right just north of the boat launch on Mitchell, there's the Days Inn. Now the Days Inn's gonna give you a great affordable rate with all the amenities for a quick one night stay. If you're looking to stay for a few days and you're gonna get into you know, a weekend with the guys, then Steve and Chris right there at the Pilgrim's Village have got the resort right there on the lake. Nice little cabins, rustic, but I'm telling you, they're warm. The beds are nice, the bait's right there, and you've got quick access to Lake Mitchell. It's an awesome place to stay. And the newest place, which we're gonna do an in-store, well, maybe not an in-store, an on-site, uh, here in about a month or two, is gonna be the Lake Cadillac Resort. Now, for those that are looking to stay on Lake Cadillac, physically right on the shores with direct access to Lake Cadillac, beginning in April, Lake Cadillac is going to be full blown open. It's an amazing new place. It was formerly the Sands. The guys who bought it have dumped a ton of money into it. They've completely renovated the place. It's going to be an awesome option for you and your family to stay in the summer months and also for sportsmen to come during those off season elbow seasons to take advantage of the great fishing that occurs right here in the Cadillac region. So we'll visit you here in a, again in about a month when this walleye bite and this late season bite on Cadillac starts to really ramp up. Until then, thanks for listening to this cool Cadillac report. You know, a fishing boat isn't a fishing boat without rod holders, tool storage, and other accessories. And the Polarcraft Kodiak series has the combing pads you need to mount anything you're going to use. I'm Captain Lance Valentine. Let me show you real quick why I love my Polarcraft Kodiak. Wide combing pads that have three quarter inch PTP reinforcement underneath, so you can drill right in without having to through drill and use fender washers. Remember, we're gonna need all these accessories when we're fishing, and the Polarcraft Kodiak makes it very easy to mount them, have them safe and secure, so you can get out and catch more fish. Last stop of the day, we swing down to Southwest Michigan. Now you got a lot of river activity going on from the Kalamazoo down to the St. Joe, and really good steelhead action. Boy, this steelhead action has been really consistent. I wouldn't say it's been out of sight bonsai, but that's because the weather's actually been so consistently warmer than normal. You've got this constant flow. The rivers are filled with steelhead now. They're at max capacity, but they've also spread out uh, into the river and they're holding up in most of the deeper slow water in and around sand flats, deep cuts along the bank. This is where most of these midwinter steelhead like to hold up. So a couple of quick tips if you're a regular guy going out in your own boat trying to take advantage of steelhead. The steelhead in these deeper holes are really, really susceptible to stuff below floats where you can target them maybe eight to 12 inches off the bottom floating either spawn or skein below floats. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure you understand how to set your rig up. I'm talking to guys who already know how to river fish. Those deep holes and cuts on the Kalamazoo and the St. Joe right now are producing really nice steelhead. 
So if you're gonna, another great option for targeting those deep holes, especially wide deep holes behind sand flats, is to go ahead and anchor out and set up a spread of crankbaits. Now, you can do it either using boards that'll automatically pull out to the side with the current, uh, and you can get yourself three or four crankbaits set up. Those, the current will cause the crankbait to dive. You can also move super slowly by crossing through and sweeping crankbaits through these deeper holes. There's a lot of different ways. Now my suggestion to you is going to be to get a hold of my friend Mark Rapson at the Black Pearl Sport Fishing Charters. He's an experienced river fisherman and if you really want to maximize that river experience and also learn a lot, you can get a hold of Mark. I know his friend Captain Tony from Frostbite also runs a river boat down in that area. These are two guides that do an awesome job of putting people on that river fishing of a lifetime down in these two great rivers. Now, they're, they're professionals, they know what they're doing, you're gonna catch fish, and it's also, like I said, one of the best ways to actually learn how to fish. If you have an interest in getting involved in river fishing, my suggestion would always be to go out with a guide, whether we're up in the central part of the state with my guy, Cat Malix, from, from up in the Manistee area, or with Mark or Tony down in that southwest Michigan area. Going with a guide is like going to school, literally. It's like learning how to fish. Don't just think you can dump a boat in on a river and go out and catch a bunch of fish. You can if you know what you're doing, but learning from these professionals is one of the best ways to become accomplished at that type of fishing. So give my buddy Mark at the Black Pearl a call. He'll get you out on the river, he'll take care of you, you know, and one thing that I would say in a mild winter like this is, this is the year to get out on the river. Whether it's up from Frankfurt all the way down to the St. Joe, there's lots of good river systems on this western shore of Lake Michigan and over Captain Jean, over on the Osable, over in the Tawas area. These guys can get you on an experience because how many times do you get this 20s and 30 degree consistent temperatures in February where it's actually tolerable, where it's actually fun to be out there because the weather is cooperating. The fish are there, guys. Get yourself out, get fishing. Whether you're on the ice or on the river, take advantage of Michigan's outdoors and get out and fish today. So hey, we're sitting here today for this fishing report at Babbitt's right here in downtown Muskegon. Now Babbitt's is one of the biggest, if not the biggest power sports dealers anywhere in the state. And as you see behind me, we've got the Polaris with the XT Pro Lodge on the back of it. On this side of us, we got a, a great 1000. We've got the great Polaris Great American rebates going on right now. And also in March, they're gonna really ramp up. So you're gonna wanna, if you're thinking about whether it's watercraft, a, a sea -Doo or something like that, whether it's a four wheeler, whether it's you wanna take advantage of a, a really late season deal and buy that snowmobile for next year at a bargain price, or whether it's a motorcycle, no matter what your power sports needs is, Babbitt's is the place. We come here frequently throughout the year and talk to you about this. The guys here are knowledgeable, they're friendly, and one thing you can count on at Babbitt's, you will get the best price, you'll get the best selection and the best service. And when you put those three together, you've got an awesome situation for buying something you're not only gonna be happy with, but from guys that are gonna take care of it for the rest of, for the rest of your ownership until you sell it and get your next ATV or ORV from Babbitt's. So stop in, talk to some, one of the stale staff here. They'll all help you. They're all friendly. They're all knowledgeable. We're here at Babbitt's bringing you this week's Hot Bite Fishing Report. We'll see you next week.